Greetings to you all. My name is Dr. Foxweed, and today we shall discuss Heraclitus of Ephesus, the early Greek philosopher. Heraclitus was a mad bastard from the Greek city of Ephesus, in the land of Ionia. He was a self-taught recluse, and many Greeks considered him to be a bit of a miserable old killjoy. He found most people annoying and ignorant, and even his judgments on fellow philosophers could get quite spicy. Famously, he said that Pythagoras and Xenophanes lacked understanding. For some time now, he's been called Heraclitus the Obscure, as the quotes that survive from his now-missing book often read like a half-eaten word salad. Perhaps Heraclitus is most well known for being the pyromaniac of philosophy. He basically described the universe as fire, a sort of metaphorically, but sort of not. Like a flame, he thought, everything is in constant flux, ever-changing, as everything is in a state of constant movement. As such was the extent of the change, Heraclitus famously declared that you cannot step in the same river twice. Scholars have spattered a lot of ink on this particular quote, Personally, I take it to mean that though a river appears to be stable, its underlying matter is in fact constantly changing through movement, and Heraclitus applied this judgment to all of reality. Uh, confusingly though, Heraclitus's fire obsession is not completely founded on metaphor. On a literal level, he did make the element fire a very important in his account of the universe, his cosmology. So, to Heraclitus, a fire is the finest element, which exists in equal balance with elements like water and earth. But it is ultimately fire, in its concentrated form, that seems to guide the universe as an intelligent higher power. Thus Heraclitus wrote quite grandly, Thunderbolt steers all things. Despite his scorn for some earlier thinkers, Heraclitus was no doubt influenced by his Ionian predecessors in many ways. Thinkers there, like Anaximander and Xenophanes, thought that the material universe was always changing, always shifting, due to the interaction of opposites. For example, cold turns into heat, and heat turns back into cold, and that sort of thing. And to them, this was how the world periodically changed itself. Heraclitus makes the conflicts between opposites a central feature of his philosophy. To him, we are mistaken if we see opposites as entirely separate. As a matter of fact, they are often two aspects of one and the same thing, and therefore fundamentally interconnected. A night and day might seem different, for example, but they are in fact part of the same process. The road up and the road down, he says, are the same thing, probably meaning here that they are both aspects of the same road, merely viewed from different perspectives. It is this conflict of connected opposites that is the driver of all change in Heraclitus's universe. Thus he writes that war is the father of all and the king of all. If the opposites didn't wage war on each other, in fact, the universe as we know it would collapse, as Heraclitus puts it, the barley drink falls apart if it is not stirred. Thus, the law of change through conflict keeps everything together as a unit. Overall then, Heraclitus believed that all of these things, the flux, the opposites and their conflict, were driven by a rational order to the universe that was neither designed by gods nor humans, and he called this mystical formula the Logos. Translating this word is a pain in itself, as it has enough definitions to fill its own book. The obscurity of this doctrine was difficult even for Greeks in Heraclitus's time. He complains that people just weren't getting the Logos, and therefore they were practically sleepwalking their way through life. Clearly, it was only Heraclitus that was woke enough to see the truth. It is perhaps fitting for a philosopher that put conflict at the heart of his ideas that Heraclitus should cause enormous future disputes in Greek philosophy. He certainly kicked the hornet's nest, did Heraclitus, and we will meet his match with the later philosopher Parmenides of Elia in a dispute on the nature of change. A class dismissed, and thank you again to all of our patrons.